Praise the Lord. Today we want to take this part of the scriptures we read here in the book of Romans in chapter 16. And uh, we want to speak under the title, With an Holy Kiss. With an Holy Kiss. Right here in the first two verses, it's just a part of the people that the apostle is greeting. We have a, a group in verse 14 and another group in verse 15. I don't want to stay, uh, stay much speaking about these two groups, but I want to just emphasize to you something. The apostle just called the name of a group of people. In the case of verse 14, it says, Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermas, Patrobas, Hermas. Five people. And it says, And the brethren which are with them. In verse 15 again, it says, Salute Philologus and Julia, Nereus and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints which are with them. So these two groups of people, they were working together as a team somewhere uh, in Rome, but they were leaders together. There is not a single one that is named as the leader, but just the whole group. And then what makes me understand that these people used to work in a proper unity is what it says at the end of the verse. It says, and the brethren which are with them. And in the second group it says, and the saints which are with them. It doesn't say, and the saints which are there. It says, and the brethren which are with them. Not with one, but with them. In other words, this group of leaders used to work in such a unity that the churches that were in the different places under the leadership, they were not inclined to say as the people that were at Corinth. You remember that the people at Corinth, they used to say, I am of, I belong to. And so they called the name of Paul or the name of Apollos or the name of uh, Cephas, which is Peter. Uh, all the ones called on the name of the Lord to say, I belong to, I belong to. However, here it says, greet this group of leaders and the saints which are with them. It means there were no frictions while they developed their work for the Lord as leaders together of a church in particular. But they were working so smoothly. The unity was so clear that the congregation didn't have any problems with any of them. It says the saints which are with them. May the Lord give us the understanding. And may we receive that understanding. What really means unity. Because unity will make church strong. Hallelujah. Unity is something that you need in your daily life. Not only when you come for service. Unity, as I said someday, is not a particular feeling or a strong effort you make at a specific time trying to be one with someone. No, that is not unity. Unity starts in the heart. Unity starts in the heart. Start with what you think 
about your brother or your sister. I say again, unity is not an isolated effort. I do to be one with someone at a specific moment in my life. No. Unity is something that comes out from the heart. Unity starts with the thought I may have concerning someone. Because the, the, the psalm we use a lot to emphasize unity, Psalm 133, it says, how good and how wonderful is for brethren to dwell together. And it says, in harmony. It starts here. Harmony starts here in the heart. If, if you feel in harmony, if you think as the word of God says that we should think about our brothers because the word of the Lord says considering the other ones as better than you. If I consider my brother a good brother, a right person, then I feel communion in my heart. Which really means harmony. And that doesn't mean that I have to be all the time with him. But whenever I think about my brother, I think about him in the best possible way. When somebody asks me about my brother, my answer will be according to my thought. And so it will be reflected in the outside what is really in my inside. So therefore, these verses call my attention, but I don't want to spend much time today about them. And why do I speak about these? Because the other parts that I want to emphasize, because the, the title for today is With Unholy Kiss, speaks exactly about it in these terms. Watch it. Verse 16. Salute one another with unholy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. I want to emphasize some few things here in these verses. Why do these emphasize with unholy kiss? In our Western culture, you may imagine, well, they say with an holy kiss because if you give us a, a greeting like this to a sister, it should be with holiness in your heart. It means with no strange passion thought in your heart. But when you come to the background, you find that it is not what is saying here. Why? Because in the culture, and in the time when this part of the scriptures was written, it was not allowed men to kiss women in public. And if it was not your wife or your, uh, or your mother or something, you could not kiss them. So when it is saying here, salute one another with an holy kiss it's not speaking about that exactly that you come to kiss a sister and you must be holy when you no. it wasn't allowed in that culture you couldn't do that so why it says then with an holy kiss because in the culture when it came to the point of greeting men would greet men and women would greet 
women. But if you want to understand it, you must go to the context. It says here again, watch. Salute one another with an holy kiss. Uh, the churches of Christ salute you. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. So now it is speaking concerning something that I was trying to tell you at the beginning. It says, those which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine. So you could kiss someone and not be with that someone. Are you with me? Hallelujah. I say again, if it comes to the point of greeting, I'm speaking in those terms. You could kiss someone and not be in with that someone. Yeah. What? Yes. Judas came to greet Jesus in the night. He betrayed him and gave him a kiss. Hail, Master. And the Lord Jesus answered him and said, Do you betray your friend with a kiss? Hallelujah. Are you with me? Are you following what I'm trying to show you? So when it says here, Salute one another with an holy kiss. He's speaking about it because it says, I beseech you, brethren, that you keep in check those that cause divisions and offenses against or contrary to the doctrine that you have learned. So it is speaking about people that normally come together but are not one. Because being together doesn't mean to be one. I want to always you to hear these words and think it over. I say again, we can be together and not be one. To be together doesn't mean to be one. And what the apostle is saying here, when he emphasizes salute one another, he doesn't say salute one another with a kiss. Because that was the custom. That was the custom among them. It was something normal. Each time they met someone and they wanted to salute the person, they normally did it like that, a kiss. And still when you go to some place, it will be, a kiss on this chick and then on the other one. Two. And still I go to the eastern countries. And when I greet special people, it will be like this. Hug, kiss, kiss. Well, even sometimes they don't just give a kiss now, but they just put their chick against yours. And they may hug you. That is something cultural. That is the way that you show respect or you want to show someone that you are good or feel good with his presence right there. 
But here it says, it doesn't say, salute one another with a kiss. He emphasizes, salute one another with a holy kiss. He's saying something. There is a message when he adds that word and says, salute one another with a holy kiss. Holy. Not a kiss, a holy kiss. Why? Because he says here, because I want you to mark them which cause divisions and offenses against or contrary to the doctrine that you have learned and to avoid them. It means don't try to show that you are kissing someone who is not in agreement with the word of God and he is even not in agreement with the rest of church. They cause divisions. Divisions also start in the heart. Unity starts in the heart. Division also starts in the heart. The Lord Jesus says, out of the heart, the mouth shall speak. Whatever is in the heart will be manifested in the outside. Why? Because that is the concept that you have about somebody or something in life. So that is why the Lord is saying here, I want you to salute one another with a an holy kiss. So in other words, if you greet someone in that way, there must be sincerity on your part and in the other one's part. Are you here with me this morning? Are you following the point? Now, there are some who cause divisions among brethren and offenses against the doctrine that we have learned. Why? I don't know, but as you notice here, it happened since the very beginning. So there is something that we cannot avoid. We cannot avoid that. It's strange, but if you try to dig deeper into it, and it, but why, why? I don't know, my only answer, because I'm not the doctor who knows everything, and I hope to never consider that I know everything, because you never know many things. However, I could say, maybe all this has been like that because of our human nature. Human nature is so strange. And many times wicked, the Lord says in his word that the heart of man is wicked above everything. So human nature is treacherous. Human nature will not always comply with the will of God. Most of the times, human nature doesn't want to comply. So here you will find in the very beginning in the church, people who don't agree with the rest of the church. And they cause divisions. It means, how do you cause divisions? With your attitude. When I show displeasure, whenever something is going on. With my speech, because not only show with my actions or with my gestures, but sometimes with my speech, someone asked me about the church, and then I started showing displeasure. It means I don't feel good now. I don't feel agreement now. When you say that, you immediately are putting in the heart of someone else a question mark in his heart. Why do you feel like that? 
Is there anything wrong that you know that I don't know? You understand what I'm telling you? It's, it's just like that. But it is, it is something simple at the same time. Because we can erase all that with just one single coming to the house of God and to the presence of the Lord to say, Lord, I just want to go back to your word. I want to see my brothers and my sisters as I should see them. That's it. But something that calls my attention also in verse 17 is, is well, when I was examining and, and I saw it, I said, oh, Lord. God is so great. Watch it. It says, Verse 17, now I beseech you, to beseech is the same that to beg, now I beg you to mark them which cause divisions. I beseech you to mark them which cause divisions. You understand? I beg you, brother. I beg you, sister. It is what the Lord is saying here. I beg you to mark them which cause divisions. And offenses against the doctrine that you have learned. But you know what caught my attention? There is a long list. The whole chapter 16 is a whole list. Listing names, 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 names. And the apostle is calling upon every one of them. And in maybe in a word or in two words, just showing by the Holy Spirit the good things that are in these people. But in this case, he says, this time I will not show you. This time I will not give you names. I mark, the apostle is saying, I mark the ones who have something good to teach us and to show us. But you are the one to mark the one who is not right. <laughs> it's difficult. In other words, I don't know if you understand. I mark, because that is what he is doing. I mark all the good brothers, sisters, leaders, and so on in the church. But you... Mark the ones who cause divisions and the ones who are uh, causing offenses against the doctrine. So it is your task. Why? Because it must be something that you do with a clean heart. You should not consider that someone is wrong because I tell you. I'm not the one that is more or less the, the, the message the apostle is giving us here. I'm not the one to show you who is wrong. I will not tell you that brother so and so is wrong. Because we should not consider people wrong because somebody else tells us. Are you following me? <laughs> I'm speaking from my own place. I should not consider anybody wrong just because somebody else tells me he's wrong. In other words, I should not influence anybody to consider someone else is wrong. What he's doing is this. I show you who is right. 
I show you who is doing good. I show you who is complying with the word. I show you who is a good leader. But if you want to know who is causing divisions, that is your task. Hallelujah. If you want to see who is offending the doctrine of the Lord Jesus, that is your task. I will not point to anybody. Again, and, and, and I know the time is always short on Sunday mornings, and I have to finish. But again, because that is the point for today. Again, I will explain to you. The apostle is saying, I will give you the names of these good people, good leaders, people who are helping, blessing the church, and all these things. I will show all these things to you. But... There are some who will not be right. They are wrong. They are causing divisions in the church. And they are offending the doctrine of the Lord that we have taught you. But that is not my duty. I will never influence you towards anybody. There are some who cause divisions, but you are the ones with the task of marking them, not me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know if you, if you get it. And it is the apostle. And uh, just let me close my Bible to make sure that I'm ending the message today. But is that the way we do? I, when I was studying this, I said to myself, oh Lord, forgive me and forgive us. Because many times we do the opposite. <laughs> I say again. When I was studying this and I understood and I saw this, I said, Lord, forgive me. Because the apostle is marking them which are right and says, if you want to know who's wrong and who's causing division, you are the one to mark them. But many times we do the, the opposite. We mark all the ones we consider wrong. And we never, who, we never mark and say anybody who is right. Should I say it again? Okay. And this is the conclusion. Many times we are always marking the ones who are wrong. And telling and showing who is wrong. And we forget and never Mark anybody who is right and never say this one is right, that one is right. The apostle said, I mark the ones who are right and I show you their names. But if you want to know who are the ones who cause divisions and offenses against the doctrine, you are the one to mark them, not me. <laughs> Good, huh? Did you get it? Time to give thanks, please.